All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about arithmetic decreasing annuities. And so if you haven't watched our previous lesson where we talked about arithmetic increasing annuities, I would recommend that you watch that first because it directly ties in with what we're going to be looking at in this lesson. And so in that video, we looked at an annuity where the payments formed an arithmetic increasing progression. And so that would look like something like this where we have a first payment of $100 and then every payment afterwards we increase by a set amount of $100, right? That's different than a geometric progression where the payments change by a certain rate or a certain percent. For an arithmetic decreasing progression, we would start with some amount and then decrease by a particular amount each time, right? We're not decreasing by a rate or percent, we are decreasing by a set amount. And so in this case, if you look at this series of payments, we start with 900 and then each subsequent payment decreases by a set amount of 100 until we get to our final payment of 100, right? If we were to go one more payment, we would be paying zero, which isn't a payment anymore. And so it would stop at $100. And so in the increasing scenario, we were increasing by 100, but now in a decreasing scenario, we were subtracting 100. And so a more general example of an arithmetic decreasing progression would be if we started with a payment of n and then we decreased by one each time. So our next payment would be n minus one and then we'd have n minus two and that would continue on until we get to our last payment of one, right? We would start with some value and decrease by one until we get to that final payment of just $1. And so if we want to calculate the present value or the future value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity where the payments follow this arithmetic progression, we are going to want to find a nice formula for those calculations. And so in order to do that, we are going to want to analyze this general example of these payments that form an arithmetic decreasing progression. Okay, so here's a timeline of our scenario. We start at time equals zero, but then at time equals one, we have a payment of N and then one year later or one period later at time equals two, we have a payment of n minus one, right? It decreased by $1. And then that would continue on until our last time value time equals n, where we make that payment of $1. And so if we wanted to find the present value of these series of payments, the present value for an annuity immediate would be calculated at time equals zero. So that's the valuation date of the present value. And we would find that that present value is equal to that first payment n, times the present value factor to the power of one, right? We need to multiply by the present value factor so that we take this payment of n and bring it back to the valuation date of the present value. And then we would add our next payment of n minus one, and that would be multiplied by v squared or the present value factor squared. And that would bring this payment back to the valuation date two periods. And that would continue on until our last payment of $1 and that would be multiplied by V to the power of N, right? So however many periods in the future this is at time equals N, we need to bring it back that N number of periods. And so we have V to the power of N. And so we actually have a notation for this. We will say that the present value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity is this notation. We have capital D for decreasing, and then we have this small a to signify that we are looking at the present value. And then we will have N the number of payments, and a bracket and I our interest rate. And that will be equal to this series of payments right here. So we will have N times V plus N minus one times V squared, and then all the way up until V to the power of N. And so what we wanna do is find a closed formula for this series of payments, because that's going to be a lot easier to use for scenarios where we want to calculate the present value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to do some equation manipulation, just like we did for an arithmetic increasing annuity. In fact, the process is very similar. And so if you've watched our lesson on arithmetic increasing annuities, this process will look familiar. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna be working with this formula right here. And so instead of using this notation every time, it's gonna be a little cumbersome to write that notation every time. I'm just going to set that equal to S and that's gonna make it easier to work with. And so if we clean up our work here, we will have that S is equal to N times V plus N minus one times V squared and then add up until that last term of V to the power of N, right? These are the same thing. I'm just gonna be using S so it's easier to work with as we do this equation manipulation. And so what we're going to do is create a second equation by multiplying this one by the quantity of one plus I. So we will have S times one plus I. And so this is the accumulation factor, right? We're just gonna be bringing forward this series of payments one year. 
And so you might be wondering, why are we doing that? Well, I'm gonna show you in just a second, but first let's just multiply this quantity through each of these terms. And so in order to do that, it's going to be important to rewrite these present value factors to be what they're actually equal to. And so let me just show you what that would look like. We would have that this is equal to n times one divided by one plus i, and that would be added to n minus one times one divided by one plus i squared, and that would continue up until one divided by one plus i to the power of n. Right, each of these present value factors is just equal to one divided by one plus i to the power of whatever the present value factor is to the power of. Okay, and so if we multiply one plus i to each of these terms, we will have that this is equal to n times one plus i divided by one plus i plus n minus one times one plus i divided by one plus i squared, and that will be added up until our last term of one plus i divided by one plus i to the power of n. And so then notice that for each of these terms, this one plus i in the numerator is going to cancel out with one of the one plus i quantities in the denominator. For this first term, that's just gonna become one, but then for this term, one of these one plus i's will cancel out with this, and so we're just gonna have one divided by one plus i, and this quantity will be reduced to one plus i to the power of n minus one. And so this will be equal to n plus n minus one times one divided by one plus i, and then that will add up to our last term of one divided by one plus i to the power of n minus one. And then we can rewrite these two expressions to be in their present value factor form. And so we'd have that this is equal to n plus n minus one times the present value factor to the power of one. And then we'll add up to our last term where we will have the present value factor to the power of n minus one. Okay, and so if we clean up our work here, what we're going to do next, now that we have this new second equation, is we're going to subtract the original equation from this equation. So we're gonna have s times one plus i minus s. And so if we do that, we'll have s times one plus i minus s, and that will be equal to subtracting these terms from these terms. And so you have to match them up by the power of the present value factor, right? So this term and this term both have the present value factor to the power of one. This term would match up with some term in between these two terms where there'd be a present value factor to the power of two. And then there would be some other factor in here where you would have the present value factor to the power of n minus one, right? That would come before v to the power of n, right? You would have a present value factor to the power of n minus one, and that would match up with this present value factor right here. And so this n that isn't being multiplied by any present value factor doesn't have a term that matches up with it in this equation. And so if we're subtracting these terms from these terms, this n is gonna be left untouched. And so we will start by writing n, and then we're going to have this term n minus one times v minus n times v. And so we will have plus n minus one minus n times v. And what you'll notice here is that this positive n and this negative n will cancel out. And so you're just going to be left with negative one times the present value factor. And so what this is going to be is minus the present value factor to the power of one. And what would happen is if you went through all of these terms in between here, you would find that you would just be left with negative one times the present value factor to whatever power you have up until the power of n minus one, right? And so we would have minus v squared, and then we would continue to subtract those terms up until v to the power of n minus one. But then don't forget we're subtracting all the terms from s, and so we also need to subtract v to the power of n, and so that will be our last term right there. All right, and so then we have these series of terms here that are all negative except for this first one. And so watch what happens if we pull out a negative one out of these series of terms. This will be equal to n minus, and we're pulling that negative out. So we're going to have positive v plus v squared plus, and we'll be adding up to v to the power of n minus one plus v to the power of n. And so now do you recognize this series of terms right here? What does this represent? Well, if you remember how we derived the formula for the present value of a regular annuity immediate, right, where the payments did not change, we had the same level payment each period, this was the series of terms that we had, right? This represented the present value of a series of $1 payments for an n number of periods. And so this right here 
is this notation. We have a and then n bracket i, right? This is what we use to represent the present value of an annuity immediate where the payments do not change. And so we can replace this series with this notation. And so if we clean up our work here, we will have that this is equal to n minus that notation, a n bracket i. And so now we're almost done. We're almost at that closed form of the formula for the present value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity. All we have to do now is work with this side of the equation. And so let's multiply this s through this quantity, and you'll see that we have s plus s times i minus s, and this positive s and this negative s will cancel out. And so we're just left with s times i is equal to n minus the present value of an annuity immediate. And then if we divide both sides by i, we will be able to solve for s, which remember, we set equal to this notation, right? s is the present value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity. And so we'll have that s is equal to n minus a n bracket i divided by i. And so then if we clean up our work here again, we can then replace s with what we set it equal to, and we will have that capital D, A, and then N bracket I is equal to N minus A, N bracket I, divided by I. And so this right here is the formula for the present value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity immediate. And so we could go through a similar process to find the future value formula for an annuity immediate scenario, and we could also go through a similar process for the present value and future value formulas for an annuity due. However, we don't need to go through that process because all of those formulas can be found using this formula that we just derived. And so let me show you how you would find these formulas. Okay, so here we have a chart of all of the formulas that you will need for an arithmetic decreasing annuity. You'll see in this column we have the formulas for an annuity immediate scenario, and in this column we have the formulas for an annuity due scenario. And then of course this row right here are our present value formulas, and then this row right here are the future value formulas. And so this right here is the formula we just found for the present value of an annuity immediate where the payments have an arithmetic decreasing progression. And so if we wanted to find the future value, we would just have to multiply this formula by one plus i to the power of n, right? Because what that would do is take this present value at time equals zero and bring it forward in n number of periods. And so you'd have the future value at time equals n. And so if you wanna see that work of how this formula is found by multiplying this by one plus i to the power of n, I'll have that work up here in a screen for you to look at and you can pause the video if you wanna see how it's done. But what you'll find is that it will simplify nicely and you'll actually have this notation right here for the future value of an annuity immediate show up in this formula. But really you don't really need to know this formula because you can just multiply this formula by one plus i to the power of n and just plug in your values of i and n and you don't even need to simplify to get this nicer formula if you wanna know the future value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity immediate. And so the same would be true for the annuity due formulas, but just remember that the difference between the annuity immediate and annuity due formulas is the denominator, right? So just like we had for the arithmetic increasing annuity formulas or just the regular annuity immediate and annuity due formulas, the only difference between those formulas in their calculations were the denominators in each of the present value or future value scenarios. And so remember, you just change the denominator from i, the interest rate, to one minus v, the present value factor. Or you could also think of this as being D, the equivalent discount rate for that scenario, right? D, the discount rate is equal to one minus V. Okay, so that's how you would find the annuity due formulas. You just have to change the denominator from I to one minus V. And that will work for the present value scenario and the future value scenario. And so these are all the formulas that you need to know for an arithmetic decreasing annuity immediate or an annuity due. And so before we end this lesson, let's look at an example of using one of these formulas. All right, so here's our example problem. We have a 10 year annuity immediate, has a first payment of $2,000 and decreases by $200 each year thereafter. Assuming an effective annual interest rate of 6%, calculate the present value. All right, so we're told in this scenario that we have an annuity immediate. So we know we're gonna be using one of our annuity immediate formulas. And then we're told that the annuity starts with a payment of 2000 and the subsequent payments decrease by $200 each period or each year in this case. And so we know that we have an arithmetic 
decreasing annuity, right? It's not a geometric annuity because it's decreasing by the same amount every time. It's not decreasing by a percent or a rate. It is decreasing by a set amount. And then finally, we also know that we want to calculate the present value of this arithmetic decreasing annuity immediate. And so now we know exactly what formula we are going to be using. If we want to find the present value, we just need to use the formula capital D A N bracket I. And so now remember that this formula represents the present value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity where it is decreasing by $1 every period, right? Not $200. And so what we have to do is multiply this by the amount at which the payments are decreasing by every period. And so we need to multiply this by 200. And so I'll write 200 and multiply that by that formula. All right, and so this is it. This is the entire calculation for this problem. And so that might seem a little weird because we didn't use this value of $2,000 here, right? How does this calculation know that our first payment is $2,000? And so while that might seem confusing, this formula right here that we derived takes that into account, right? As long as you multiply by the correct amount that your annuity is decreasing by every period and you use the correct value of N, this formula will work. All right, and so let's figure out our values of N and I. We're told that we have a 10 year annuity immediate. And so that means that N is equal to 10. And then for our interest rate I, we are told that we have an effective annual interest rate of 6%. And so that's equal to 0 0.06. And then always remember to check that your interest rate matches the frequency of the payment cycle. In this case, this is being compounded annually, right? This is an effective annual interest rate. And we have a 10 year annuity, which means that each payment is being made every year. And so our payments are yearly and our interest rate is yearly. And so we're good there. We don't need to convert our interest rate to any other type of interest rate. And so if we change our formula here to include those values, we'll have 10 bracket 0 0.06. Okay, and so then if we write the formula for this notation, remember that D A N bracket I is equal to N minus A and bracket I divided by I, then we will have that this is equal to 200 times 10 minus A 10 bracket 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.06. All right, and so now if we're going to calculate this, we also need to calculate this right here, which is the notation for the present value of an annuity immediate. And we know that A N bracket I is equal to one minus the present value factor to the power of N divided by I, and then remember that the present value factor to the power of n is equal to one divided by one plus i to the power of n. And so if we use those two formulas for this right here, this will be equal to 200 times 10 minus one minus one divided by 1.06 to the power of 10 divided by 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.06, right? This whole quantity right here is this notation, but using the formula that it is equal to. And remember, we just replaced the present value factor with what that is equal to as well. Okay, and so if we plug all of this into our calculator, we will find that this is equal to $8,799.71. And that is the present value of this 10 year annuity immediate with an arithmetic decreasing progression. Okay, and so just like with increasing arithmetic annuities, you might have noticed that this calculation got a little complex, and so this might be difficult to plug into your calculator depending what type of calculator you are using. And so I would recommend that you try to break this up into smaller calculations and then combine them as you go, right? Maybe you'll do this calculation and then subtract it from one, then divide by 0 0.06, and then subtract this from 10, divide by 0 0.06, and then multiply by 200, right? Kind of break it up into smaller pieces. But there is an easier way to calculate this if you are using a financial calculator, but I'm going to save that for a future video where I focus completely on how to use a financial calculator for the various scenarios throughout this course. Okay, so look forward to that video. But with that, that's all I had for this video. And so if you wanna see some more example problems, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.